for the first time ever, live on DVD, it's Jimmy Cricket! What a dream I had the other night. I dreamt I was in the desert. And who should I see but Westlife? I thought it was Westlife. It turned out to be Oasis. <laughs> hey? It really is laughter for all the family. I rang up the optician. He's no good. Well, he told me he couldn't see me. And I bumped into this fella. He was carrying one of them big grandfather clocks. He said, why don't you look where you're going? I said, and why don't you wear a wristwatch like everybody else? Along the way, you'll see Jimmy as you've never seen him before. <laughs> it really is laughter for all ages. See, there's no future in budgie jumping. And finally, find out just what Jimmy does keep in that suitcase. Facebook. And there's more. As well as all the extras, which include Mammy's letter app and some hilarious outtakes. And also, there'll be some poetry from the bard of Ballygo Backwards himself. I said, Doctor, Doctor, I keep thinking I'm a moth. Each evening from dusk until dawn. He said, you should see a psychiatrist. I said, I will, but I was passing and your light was on. And not forgetting that all-important phone call to his mammy. You had a barbecue. People came from hundreds of miles. Mostly firemen. <laughs> You've been to the doctor? He's been to the doctor. Yeah. He told you to drink a hot glass of orange after a hot bath. That was three weeks ago and you're still drinking the hot bath. See Jimmy singing. Have you met Miss Jones? Someone said as we shook hands, she was just Miss Jones to me. Then I said, Miss Jones, you're a girl who understands I'm a guy who must be free And it just wouldn't be the same without that letter from his dear old mammy. Last night, your father thought he had a hole in his heart, but it turned out to be a polo mint in his pyjama pocket. There's still a part of me that always will be there. Jimmy Cricket, the man behind the laughter. Ladies and gentlemen, you're now looking at a man desperate for laughs. <laughs> You've got to be desperate to come on dressed like this with your family watching. I'd like to show you a 200-year-old piece of history. Not me, the hat. <laughs> this is a pith helmet, named after the man who invented it, Sir Basil Helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and the boots, ladies and gentlemen, ideal for the battlefield. When you're attacked, you tuck down inside them and fire back through the lace holes. <laughs> you see, this whole uniform was worn 
by my four burrs. I did have three burrs, but one of them fell into a vat of porridge. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the uniform was really worn by my great-great-granddad, Lieutenant Carruthers Cricket. <laughs> OBE, DFC, MBE, and ingrown toenail. <laughs> Who fought for that famous regiment, the King's Own Mounted Banjos. <laughs> they had plenty of pluck. <laughs> I'd like to take you back a bit. <laughs> no, that's too far. I'll go far. When Lieutenant Carruthers was born, his mother was surprised. She was expecting a spin dryer. <laughs> he came home one day, he said, Mommy, why do the other boys laugh at me? She said, be still while I polish your antlers. <laughs> it was then he heard the sound of a distant bugle. <laughs> He knew that the army life was the life for him. He joined the regiment as a simple private. More simple than private. <laughs> and his rise through the ranks was meteoric. He sat on the wrong end of a bayonet. <laughs> One day, the colonel called him in. He said, in. <laughs> he said, Lieutenant Crothers, cricket. <laughs> Tomorrow, you leave for Africa. The rest of us are going to Scarborough, but there's no seats left in the coach. <laughs> it was in Africa, he was surrounded by boars. It's a bit like here. He wasn't frightened, folks. He had his lucky charm. A white flag. And he soon knew he wouldn't be in the thick of battle because, you're right, he heard the sound of a distant bugle. <laughs> 10,000 Zulus kept attacking him. There was nothing else he could do. Lieutenant Crothers Cricket fought like the man. He let them have it. <laughs> he was shot! <laughs> They got him. No, it was there. <laughs> and when the smoke died down, he realized he did something dreadful in his fight against the Zulus. He'd shot Michael Kim. <laughs> and as he lay there with 12 spears in him, because the Zulus always like to finish with a double top, <laughs> nobody could help him. Not even Jim Bowen. <laughs> he knew it was the end. Because he heard the sound of a distant bugle. bugle. There was nothing else to do. Fortunately, he brought his bagpipes. <laughs> I've had it up to here with this place. Don't you ever stop moaning. Lunchtime and you're still complaining. I suppose it's stew again. Hold up your plate! from this position. I took off a 
day off to come and see you. So what? Frank Bruno's not short of sparring partners. It's taken me two hours to get to you. What happened? Your broomstick break down? And I've got my new hat on, I know. You'll do anything for a laugh. Well? If I was, I wouldn't be in here. Do you know you're useless? You've never done anything right in your life. Don't start. Useless. You've caused me nothing but a heartache since the first day I ever married you. Put your mouth in the next bed. It must be exhausted. Your first job. Your first decent job in two years and you end up in hospital on the first day. Did you bring me any chocolates? I ate them on the bus. Did you bring me any grips? I ate them on the bus. Pity you didn't bring your mother. The last decent job you had was two years ago and you packed that up after the first day. Have you ever tried wallpapering a lighthouse? <laughs> You've gone and done it again, haven't you? You get a good job as a window cleaner and you finish up in hospital. It's not my fault. I've never been a window cleaner before. What happened then? I fell off the ladder. Oh, yes. Trust you. Trust you to fall off the ladder. I've never been a window cleaner before. What did the doctor say? They're going to amputate in the morning. <laughs> amputate? It's the only way. What do you mean? Oh. Uh, I've come to collect my ticket. Yes, madam. Ibiza. Oh, thank you. You'll have a lovely holiday. You wake up in the morning in your luxury hotel to the beautiful blue waters of the Mediterranean Sea lapping gently against the edge of your bed. <laughs> Is that right? Uh, sir? You're offering a single journey to Australia for only ten quid? That is so, sir. Ten pounds to Australia! I'll take it. <laughs> I believe it's that way, sir. <laughs> Mummy? Guess who? Yeah, it's me, Jimmy. How's Dad? He's lying in bed with his feet up. The ceiling's come through. <laughs> How did he get on on the bowls match? Yeah, the bowls match. He's in hospital. It serves him right for lying on the grass with his mouth open. <laughs> oh, the audience tonight, excellent. Three of them are staying. No, I've got some Japanese people in tonight, Mummy. Mm. I might have to do my jokes in plastic. <laughs> I remember last week with some Germans, they liked me. At the end of my act, they all stood up and shouted, Swine Hunt. <laughs> Listen, Mummy, come a bit closer to the phone. I've had to leave my bed, said her. But there was a cockroach in it. Mm. I told the landlady. She wanted to charge me extra for keeping a pet. <laughs> She said, I'm giving you two days to pay your rent. I said, right, I'll have a good Friday and Easter Sunday. <laughs> anyway, I've got a nice hotel. Yeah, very nice, Mummy. The higher you are up, the cheaper it is. I've got a tent on the roof. <laughs> I went to the restaurant last night and the manager wouldn't let me in. He said I needed a tie. So I put a tie on. My trousers fell down. <laughs> okay, ring you next week. Bye-bye, Mummy. Bye. and shattered. In the name of heaven, tell me what's happened, Jack. They're closing down the factory that made the... <laughs> for the squeaky cushions. No, Jack! They're never closing the factory that made the... <laughs> for the squeaking cushions. I was earning good money. 
I was getting temp here. <laughs> You've got to put up a fight. You've got to attack, Jack. <laughs> the union sent a delegation to the management about compensation. What did they say? They said it, it was all to do with a common market. Common market? Common market? Them foreigners could never... <laughs> Try for a job at the foundry where they make the <laughs> for the teddy bears. I went for a job at the factory where they make the <laughs> for the teddy bears. What happened, Jack? I got the sack after half an hour. You got the sack, Jack. <laughs> what happened? What did you do wrong? A lady came in with a little girl. They bought a teddy bear. The little girl picked the teddy bear up and it went. Five seconds, lads. I name this ship HMS Fearnaught. One, two. Ladies and gentlemen, there's more. <laughs> I got another letter from my mammy this morning. I think she's having trouble with this one. Dear Emmy, I hope you can eat my rotting. <laughs> as I have lost my pecs. <laughs> Your farer is an eeling ool. <laughs> I give him a brand of Sprin and a droop of brandy, he should be mourning a lot feeling in the better. <laughs> I found my specs. Oh, God. Last night, I dreamt I was eating a giant wine gum. I woke up and the hot water bottle was gone. <laughs> the other day, I put your father's long johns out on the line to dry and some birds made their nest in them. <laughs> he didn't want to disturb them, which is why he is walking funny. <laughs> <laughs> Old Mrs. Hewson, who was the knit nurse at the school for 40 years, <laughs> retired two weeks ago. She misses the job, and she sits for hours by the far side, stroking a coconut. <laughs> Little Tommy from next door and his friend from school went to get their hair cut yesterday. When they got to the hairdressers, they peeped round the door and saw a man's hair was being singed. Tommy turned to his pal. He said he's looking for them with a light. <laughs> Lots of happiness from your loving mommy. Mm-hmm. 
you have a long and interesting life ahead of you. Oh, good. <gasps> I see you with a beautiful woman. What am I doing? <laughs> I can't quite tell. Uh, it might be in part two. Oh. <laughs> I see you on a stage. People are laughing whilst you are talking. That actually happened to me once. Oh. <gasps> you are going to live in a beautiful big house in the country. What's the matron like? <laughs> The house is yours. My house. Fame and fortune awaits you. Thank you very much. That's all I wanted to know. Oh. And there's more. <laughs> oh? Let us look deep into the future. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mrs. Gypsy Lady. Yes? Uh, the longer the ticks, the more it's going to cost me, right? Oh, a small price to pay for knowing what awaits you. Well, I'm a bit pushed for time. You can read the rest in bed. <laughs> Take a seat. <laughs> Name? Stanley Ganley. <laughs> Address? Pheasant Crescent. <laughs> Stanley Ganley Pheasant Crescent. Everything rhymes. Isn't that pleasant? <laughs> Occupation? By my simple garb, you wouldn't know it. But I earn a crust as a humble poet. When did you last work as a poet? I haven't had work in over a year. Tough on my wife and four kids, I fear. I believe that you're idle. You don't want work. That's not true, Mr. Burke. Oh. <laughs> I'm doing it now. The life of a poet is very hard. That's not my problem. Just fill in this card. Oh, deary me. This is outrageous. I know. Isn't it contagious? <laughs> Each time I speak, you finish the rhyme. Now, just stop this nonsense. You're wasting my time. <laughs> ah, a physicist. The job's well paid. I can't put the bubbles in the lemonade. <laughs> That's not what a physicist has to do. Just how can I get through to you? Oh, I've done it again. So what sort of poetry do you write? Father's Day cards. I could write them all night. Of all the fathers in the world, we think you are the pick. <laughs> and we'll all be overjoyed when they let you out of the nick. That was a terrible rhyme. I thought it was dire. I've had enough of this job with you fools plying for hire. You mean you're resigning? You're leaving, Mr. Burke! A meagre 30 pounds a week. 30 pounds? I'll take it. It's work. <laughs> He's a man of today. He uses the new sensational aftershave Mustang. Life takes on a whole new meaning for the today man when he uses. Mustang. He is irresistible. He's found that he has a new charm and charisma <laughs> thanks to Mustang. They just can't resist him. He has a new attraction, new admirers thanks to Mustang.
Yes. I thought they were clergymen. It's their day off. <laughs> Please don't, don't, don't stop. Keep it going. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I noticed that the space in the wall tells me somebody's pinched the clock. <laughs> if you're driving home tonight, please be careful. Because I'm walking. <laughs> and to all the viewers at home, thank you for watching. This is a family show. And if we find out the family that's watching it, I'm going to go home there and congratulate them personally. <laughs> I'd like to finish on a romantic song because uh, I'm a bit of a romantic, you know. And thank you, Maestro. <clears throat> Love letters straight from your heart. Keep us so near while apart. <laughs> when I have all the love I can ride, I'm not a Every love.